Leprechauns are, in fact, they're cobblers. They're the people who fix their shoes. And this first story is the egg girl and the leprechaun. Now, there was a girl who was smack dab in the middle of a very large family. She had five brothers and five sisters. And she was called the egg girl because it was her job to take care of the chickens. So she took care of the chickens and she sold the eggs once a week in the town. And she had a long walk from her wee farm down into the town. And she would walk along thinking about how she wanted to help her family and do good things for her little sisters. Now she had a fine little hair ribbon and she wanted to get hair ribbons for all of her sisters. And she was walking along thinking about that. And she heard this strange sound off in the distance, just off the road, and she heard the sound going, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, dude! It was as if, what was it, like a bird or some kind of mouse or something? Hit me, hit me, come on, hit me, dude! So she followed that sound off the road and through the bog, and she came to a place where there were all these hawthorn bushes, and she looked down, and there, connected to the hawthorn bush by a thorn right through the back of his trousers, was a wee little man. And he was dangling and flailing in the air and saying, Come on, help me, help me, dude. Don't stand there like a boiled penguin. Come down here and help me. <laughs> so she reached down to help him. And he said, And mine, don't. She ripped my trousers for their new. And she pulled him off of that thorn. But she noticed, as she did, that there was, why, a little bench and a set of tools. And there were all these shoes. Well, they're the shoes of the fairy people, don't you know? And the reason leprechauns have gold, pots of gold, is because the fairies pay them in gold, and so that's how they get their pots of gold. And if you capture a leprechaun, or help a leprechaun, and you don't lose sight of it ever, it must tell you where that pot of gold is. So she said, well, you're a leprechaun, aren't you? And she says, yes, I am a leprechaun, aren't I? And I know the rules, and you know the rules. I have to show you where the gold is, so let's go. So they start walking down the road. She says, well, where are we going? She says, I'll tell you that. Never mind that. Just hold me up higher. So he's holding her up high. And he says, oh, oh, now what is it you like to do best? She said, well, I'm trying to help my family. He says, help your family, is it? Why, why, I see your ma coming down the road right behind us, and she has her underwear on her head. Well, she doesn't turn around, does she? She says, oh, really, does she? Well, it must be laundry day, and she does that when she wants to get it nice and dry. <laughs> Put me in the other hand now. I'm getting a stitch in my side. So she puts him in the other hand, and she says, you know, I'm seeing something very strange behind. Oh, oh, look at that! It's your cow and it's on fire! She says, ah, oh, yes, indeed. You know what? That'd make it easier for us to steam the milk for the lattes, don't you? <laughs> Sir! She switches him down to where he has the, she has the uh, basket of eggs. She says, put me down just a little bit now because I'm getting very tired. But then he starts reaching up and he's throwing the eggs right out of the basket. Here, what are you doing? She says. And with surprising strength, he's reaching up and I'm throwing them right over her shoulder. And she says, what are you doing? He says, oh, the most amazing thing. Each one of those eggs, a fully grown chicken is just rising right out of it, walking behind us. She says, look, I'm not looking around for nothing. Because if I look around, I just see a lot of smashed eggs. Now show me where the gold is and be quick about it. <laughs> so he takes her off the road and he says, this way, that. Okay, now they go through a bog and this way, that. And then they come to a place where there are many saplings. Many, many trees, a little grove of saplings. And he says, okay, right. They go in straight and then right and then left and then they get right to the middle of all these trees. And he says, okay, it's right underneath this one. She says, oh, that's grand it is. You sure it's this one? He says, of course, I know the rules. It's underneath this one. Now you'll be needing a shovel, won't you? She says, oh, yes, I will be needing a shovel. It's not in the rules for me to get you a shovel. So listen, just go get yourself a shovel. She says, oh, just a minute, not so fast, Mr. Leprechaun. She takes off her hair ribbon and she ties it to the tree. She says, now don't you be disturbing this ribbon or touching it in any way. He said, why would I do that? It's not in the rules. I can't do that. So just go get yourself. Go get yourself a shovel. Well, she put down her basket and she ran down the road to get herself a shovel. And when she came back, oh, she walked through the park and she came into that grove of saplings. Oh, well, her egg basket had been by the side of the road, not where she left it. And that ribbon, well, there wasn't one. There were hundreds of ribbons on every single tree in that young grove. There were hundreds and hundreds of ribbons. Ah! Oh, she sat down. And then she started to smile. And then she got up, but she took down all those hair ribbons, didn't she? And she put them in her 
very much lighter basket, and she went into town and she sold hair ribbons and eggs and brought back ribbons and much more for her family. That's the story of the egg cutter and the number <laughs> Thank you.